the single fund model. The single fund model, it requires that the studio and the fund are a single entity. So we have a studio which is actually the fund. So the studio team will act, in this case, will act as the general partner or fund manager of the fund and the studio as well. And so the venture builder gets the liquidity through management fees, okay, applied to the invested capital. What is the main problem of this, um, of this structure? Well, if you want to, you know, uh, if you think about a fund, a typical fund, usually you know have the structure, the two twenty stru uh, the two twenty structures, so the management fee and the performance fee. But this usually it pays out what you need to run the fund. Instead, if you if you think of a studio, well, that's not going to work. I mean, it's going to work if you have very very big fund. So maybe it's going to work, but usually, usually let's say that you ne need a 10, 20, 30 million fund to run the operation. You're not going to make it work because, because the expenses of the studio are definitely higher than the expense of, I don't know, free, free GPs. And so you will need more money. So you need to apply a management fee, which is definitely higher compared to the market. And if you're going with the structure and sell it to the LPs out there, well, you know, it's going to sound a little bit odd, you know, because you're going to have this structure where the performance fee are, uh, where the management fees are very high. So nobody's going to fund it. So it's really, really difficult to get, to get funded with this kind of structures. And beside that, which doesn't work definitely well, it's definitely hard for, studio founder so an entrepreneur to uh you know be um, a fund manager because there are two different kind of people so it's really hard to to think at least for me to think about myself as a fund manager instead of a builder and another thing is which a lot of people doesn't think about it is that you know, studio is the founder of their own startups. So if you are a founder and you have your co-founder and at the same time you are the investors, then you have a, an interest, a conflict of interests because you are not on the same level with your founders. So for, a, let's say for the honeymoon period, you know, when you build your MVP and the startup is going, it's going well, getting the first metrics and, this, and so on, then there's a law. Then you become the investor. And then at this point, you're going to have some friction. So usually this structure does not work. Okay, the single studio model. Well, this structure is simple. It's simple because you have the studio and you put the money into the studio and you don't have the classic fund 220. So you just, fund the studio and you get the money to make the operation go. So either you can do two things. It, it depends how, many, how, mu how much money you raise on this kind of studio. So you got this holding entity, which is the studio and you have the resources to make it work. What's the problem? What's the main problem with this? Well, it depends. If you put a lot of money up front into the studio, well, it's dif it's difficult to have the investors' interest and the studio interest aligned. Because if you put all the money up front, then you know the studio have all the money, so they they don't have just the running costs covered. So it's it's difficult, you know, to have an alignment of interests between investors and between the studio. What else? And let's say that you don't give them all the money. So you just give them the money to let the studio operate and just run some startups and spin off some startups. Well, then you will still have the problem of fundraising when the startups get spin spooned off by the studio. Because at that moment, you lose, in the, you lose efficiency. Because at that moment, you will need to 
get the funding fast for your startups. And so you have to go outside and raise some money. So your operation will slow down. And again, instead, if you have the money up front, well, again, you are the founder and you are also the investor. So you will have some investor rights and you will have some problems with, the, with your founder. So usually this kind of structure, even if it's used by some studio, it, it's not the best structure to adopt. Okay, but you can, you can use it. I mean, I don't know. If you have to just run a little bit, you know, some operation to prove to build a track record, well, it could work, but just for, for a small amount. I mean, for the bootstrapping. Okay, the single studio model plus syndicate. Okay, this is kind of an evolution of the previous model that we saw. So the single studio model. So you add a syndicate to the single studio model to have a little bit more efficiency when you have to fundraise the startup. So usually the studio have some money to operate. So has the same shares of the founder. So here we have an alignment, an interest alignment between the founder and the studio. So we got two founders. So the startup studio receives common share as the founder. But then you have, you have a syndicate of investors to invest in your startups. So again, let's say that you have a good relationship with your network of investors, but still you have to rewrite all the term sheet for every startup that, that you spoon off. And you will have different investors in every startup and they are the one that decide if they want to invest in the startups or in another, but they don't know all the metrics. You know all the metrics because you are the studio. So you worked with the founder and you know all the metrics. So still it's better because you have efficiency in capital in fundraising you have alignment of interest between the studio and the founder, but still you have a little bit of a slowdown and you have to go there and negotiate the term sheet for every startups that come up. So also this model, even if it's better than the single studio model and the single fund model has some problems. Okay, the dual entity model. Well, this model is a little bit you know, you have an addition in complexity and usually I don't love complexity, but in this case, I can understand why some studios such science, atomic, and M13 apply this model because definitely it works well. So in this case, instead of having one entity, we have two entity. We have the studio and the fund. And the fund will fund, <laughs> The studio, so we'll put money in the studio to cover the running cost, or if you want to sell it better, or well, actually, this is what it is. It's you're, you know, with very small investment, you're getting out as an investor a pre order of startups because you know that that team, let's say, of course, in this case, you have to trust the team, you have to. Uh, be um, be sure that their way, their focus, that you love the studio focus. So you love the studio focus. You think that the team is a good team and you think that this team is going to produce what you think. So if you have this kind of trust, well, the studio fund will cover the running cost of the studio. And so, you give them some money, you, you give to the studio some money up front, but just to cover the running costs. So you have an alignment of interest between the studio and the fund. And since the fund usually in this case, get a liquidation preference. So you will know that studio manager are definitely aligned because if, you, if they don't make good startups, they will not get their money out there. So they will need to produce well in order to get money because the studio fund will get the money first because they have a liquidation preference. 
So, and then the studio produced the startup. So the studio and the founder are aligned in terms of interest because they have common shares. So they work together. They have the same interest. They have to be, uh, to work for the same thing. They have to go for an exit. And then the studio fund usually get a fourth right of refusal for their startups that comes out from the studio. So the studio fund will not invest in all the startups that come out from the studio. It will invest only in the best startups that will come out from the studio. So in this case also, all the, all the founders, they have to, you know, they know that, they, that if they work well, they will get the money, but they're not sure. So, you know, it also starts a good competition between startups to get their money. So in this case, the studio fund has the investor rights. But the studio fund is also can work with a with a simple 220 like all the fund because they will have only the managers so it will work so this this kind of uh, this kind of structure it works well because the the interests are aligned between the studio and the studio fund and the interests are aligned between the studio and the startups and we have a good model which even if it's a little bit complex, it works pretty well because it, you get a perfect alignment. So, and sometimes, sometimes also, um, we are seeing this a little bit. I mean, there are some studios that are applying that. Um, you know, they put uh, alongside the studio fund a syndicate, you know, to get more funding and also to um help lps to invest in in the in the in the startups that they love the most so if they want you know so in this case the studio fund will be the lead investors and you can also attract more investments into into the good startup so this is the the, the dual entity model and it's the model that works well and also helps to risk the studio model a little bit more because you have another gate you have another gatekeeper because you have the de-risking of the studio made by the ideation process and, and the validation made by data. And then, because you know, the, the strength of a studio is doing a validation process pretty well to, to get good startups out of the studio. And then the studio fund will do another de-risking by investing in only in the best startups. 